Hi, this is P.R. Sundar. Welcome to this special episode where I am going to talk about income tax. But this is not about income tax filing or saving on income tax. So what happens after filing the return? So that is what we are going to talk. So let us say we file our returns. These returns are verified by central processing unit in Bangalore. So once your ITR is verified, so it will be checked for defects. If there are any defects in your ITR filing, so you may be asked to rectify the defects to refile the return within 30 days. So if there are no defects, then your ITR will be pushed for processing. In processing, what they do? They check for your tax payment, any TDS payment, any advance tax payment. And another thing, when somebody pay money to me, so they always deduct TDS, tax deduction at source. And the TDS is paid to the income tax on behalf of me. So if I claim that money, so they will be checking, cross-checking, whether the one who deducted TDS from me, whether he has paid it or not. If he has not paid, I cannot claim for the deduction. So that will be checked. And then whether the income that you are claiming, does it match with the ITR? And then whether the deductions that you are claiming, whether they are arithmetically correct. The loss claimed by you, is it in ITR order? Sometimes we carry forward the loss. So those losses are claimed, is it in order or not? So this processing of ITR is also known as summary assessment. In case, if there is an issue with a mismatch and then your refund amount may be reduced or you may be asked to pay more tax and that is called demand notice. Usually either we get refund from income tax or we get the demand notice and we are happy when we get refund but we are not happy when the demand notices come. This video is specifically targeted those demand notices and other things. So when you file the income tax, so if you file accurately, then the probability of your getting a demand notice is very, very, very little. For those who filed tax through taxbuddy.com and if they receive any income tax notice, so the tax buddy people will help them to sort the issues. And in fact, taxbuddy.com is the only website that offers free tax notice management. If you receive any tax notice, you contact them, they will be able to help you to sort out the things. It is very simple to file income tax return with the taxbuddy.com. Just follow the link in the description, select few options and interact with the tax experts with the taxbuddy.com and the work is done. So people may get income tax notices for various reasons. So I'm going to discuss one by one. The first one, incorrect ITR form. There are so many ITR forms. I think there are seven ITR forms. Salary people may file ITR1, professional people file ITR2 and HUF file ITR3 or something like that. What I'm saying may not be correct. I'm just giving you the example. So if you are a salaried person, instead of filing ITR1, if you go and file ITR4, you will be wrong. In the central processing unit, so this will be matched. So if you file the wrong ITR form, uh, then you will be asked to redo the whole thing. Let us say you have a professional income, right? And then you filed a salary income. Under the salary and income, you filed the return. Then how the income tax department will know that you are doing wrong? Because if you are a professional, if you have a professional income, somebody would have given some money to you and they would have deducted TDS. They would have paid the TDS under the professional income category. You are filing tax under salary, but your TDS is under professional income. So that is a mismatch. So there are many ways the income tax department will know and they will send you the notices. And then so let us say you have income of more than 50 lakh rupees. So there are some additional forms you have to fill. If you don't fill it also 
the problem will come and let us say your turnover is more than 2 crore so you have to go through audit so your books have to be audited by an auditor so if not again you will be getting the notices so these are all incorrect itr filing incorrect itr form the second important reason is the wrong incorrect claim of tds let us say a person has supposed to give me 1 lakh rupees he deducted 10000 rupees tds and he has given me 90000 and he should have paid that 10000 to the income tax department so then only i can say oh my total tax liability is 50000 already 10000 rupees tds has been paid i am going to pay only 40000 i can say like that but if the other person has not paid the tds amount to the government for one or the other reason then there will be a mismatch you have to make sure that they have paid the tds to the government so if you go to your portal there's something called form 26a something like that so there you can actually check who are the people have paid the tax to the income tax department on behalf of you the tds amount then there nowadays there's something called tcs tax collected at source recently i bought a car so whenever you buy a car they ask you to pay one percent of the car price as tcs and the third one is wrong claim of income tax deductions say for example we are eligible for 1.5 lakh rupees deduction under atc so whatever you are claiming it should be within the limit within the prescribed limit and another thing uh, say for example i am also running a trust so my trust is uh, less than one year only so my trust has not got the atg certificate if you donate to my trust you are not eligible for any income tax benefit but if you donate to any trust which has atg certificate then whatever money you are donating 50 percent of that will become eligible for no tax in case you donate some money to a trust which has no atg provision and then you claim the deduction and then income tax will match so in that case your deduction so you deduct it will not be allowed so if you are donating to any charity if you want to claim the tax deduction you make sure that the trust has atg and in fact you have to ask for that number next one is the wrong set off of losses so there is a normal business income there's a speculative income so if you have a loss in speculative business and if you have a profit in normal business you cannot set off so this wrong set off is also an issue the fifth one is non-reporting of certain income sometimes we may have some income but we don't report it so that is a very very serious issue and mostly we may keep some money some large amount of money in savings account so we may receive some good amount of interest i think the interest from bank deposits i think maximum 10000 is non taxable you get more than 10000 rupees as the interest from a bank deposits so that has to be added into your income and you are liable to pay tax so many people forget it many people keep like 20 lakh 30 lakh 50 lakh they keep it in savings account so let us say if somebody keeping 50 lakh rupees in an uh, in a savings account there are few bank, banks offering 6 percent 6.5 percent interest so that interest alone can become 2 3 lakh rupees but only 10,000 is non-taxable so the remaining amount is taxable so that has to be reported and because the interest that you receive the income tax department knows like normally sometimes the people who receive the dividend they just forget few years before the dividend was not taxable but now the dividend is taxable so this dividend income this interest income and then if any other income you do not report you will be in a big trouble this sixth one may not be very relevant to many people if you are holding any foreign asset or if you are holding any foreign bank account or if you have got any money in foreign bank accounts if you are holding any shares in foreign countries like us markets 
So they all must be reported. So if you don't report, and definitely the income tax department will know. Because if I want to buy shares in US market, I will have to go to a bank to transfer Indian rupee to foreign currency, US dollar, and that will be captured. So when you have transferred certain amount of money to US dollar, and then you are not reporting any asset, foreign asset, so that is a mismatch. The last one, mismatch of income and information. You know what happens? For many politicians, their income is very, very low, but they buy properties or assets for 100 crore, 200 crore, disproportionate wealth. So whatever wealth you are creating, whatever the assets you are creating, buying, and that must be proportional to your income. So your income is showing only uh, 2 lakh rupees per annum, then suddenly you are going and buying 10 crore worth of property, then definitely the income tax will question how come you can do this. The income tax department collects the data from various institutions. They collect data from banks who deposits more than 10 lakh rupees cash or who deposit more than 2 lakh rupees cash at one point of time, who receives how much interest. Then they also collect in information from the registration department who are all the people who registered properties worth so much of money. And if you spend more than 2 lakh rupees per credit card, so also is being captured by income tax department. So if you show your annual income only uh, 3 lakh rupees and you spend 10 lakh rupees in one credit card, so definitely they can match it. So uh, in a nutshell, with so much of technology, so much of data analytics, so the income tax department can literally capture all the information, all the transactions that you are doing. So if you buy any asset which is disproportionate to your income, so that will also be flagged off. So due date for filing is fast approaching. If you file a tax return through taxbuddy.com, it's going to be very easy. And if you have not opened any account with the taxbuddy.com, you may click on the link given in the description to open an account in taxbuddy.com. So one good news is that the people who are opening account through my link will be eligible for 35% discount. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you for watching.